Well, welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Now, our webinar lead webinar, our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people or projects, teams, a company or a business. Basically, this is for every woman who leads in whatever capacity of her professional life. We select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Now, our webinar is just shy of one hour, and we'll be answering some questions near the end. So if you've got a question, put it in the chat box, and I will share that with Dr. Hamill at the end of, of our session. Now, the focus of our webinar today is taking care of yourself so that you can take better care of your business. And I am really excited to introduce our thought leader today, Dr. Rachel Hamill. Uh, Dr. Hamill is a caring and compassionate chiropractor that strives to think outside of the box to achieve optimal care for her patients. She herself has dealt with a chronic Lyme disease for over nine years and spent almost two years completely bedridden. As Dr. Hamill says, I was strung along the Western medicine block for years, which left me sicker and sicker by the day. I am really anxious to hear this webinar and, and learn about how she got well. It was with the help of a chiropractor and a naturopath that she began to slowly get her life back. And she understands the value of looking at the whole picture of health and believes that the patient's condition will determine the course of treatment. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Rachel Hamill. Welcome, Dr. Hamill. Thank you so much, Patty. That was such a wonderful introduction. <laughs> um, yes, all of that is true, and I'm so, so excited to be with you guys today and share um, on this topic. It's definitely one of my passions um, to talk about the brain, and as, you know, being a woman, an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, um, you know, there's just so many things, so many hats that we wear. And it's just so important to be able to enhance some of those things so that you can do all that you need to do within your business and when you're within your home life. So uh, definitely passionate about this. I'm excited to talk to you guys about it today. Um, so I'll just start with a little bit about myself. So you did that wonderful introduction. Um, and yes, a lot of what I do stems from my own health a journey as many, as many practitioners it does. Um, I, because of that health journey, I really cater my care to individualized care. It's very much for that person and what they're going for. So I do many different things within my practice to be able to do that. Um, so I'm what is called a certified craniopath. That is just a fancy word for the bones of the head. Um, my goal in general for every person is to enhance their brain function through many different means. Um, but it's really looking through different lenses in order to be able to really heal the brain and to enhance it as much as we can to be able to do all that we need to do. Um, so part of it is, you know, the craniopathy work that I do that I'll explain a little bit later. Um, I also do several genetic based nutrition practices, uh, stress relief practices, and really, you know, my, my goal is to create brain freedom in every individual it's for them to be able to, to have, you know, the freedom to do what they need to do, what they love to do, and pain-free and limit-free. So that's kind of a little bit about what I do. I have published my own research. I've done speaking and writing a ton of stuff and working on a new book now. So uh, a lot will be, <laughs> a lot will be coming. Um, but that's a little bit about what I do and how I practice. So let's kind of jump right into to the, the topics today. And this is kind of one of my favorite quote, quotes by Robert Kennedy. It says, the time to fix the roof is while the sun is still shining. And the reason that I love this quote so much is because, um, you know, a lot of individuals, myself included, can get really busy in your life, can get busy in certain circumstances or may not even know something is going on that's not correct um, until that roof is leaky. 
um, you know, until they try to fix it in a rainstorm. So the best time really to invest in yourself and to invest in your health is um, when the sun is shining, when not everything has fallen down and catastrophically fallen down in your life, but really to take control of your health and be more of a preventative health measure. Um, and it's a really good investment, just like we invest in learning more for our businesses, we invest in you know structure for our business. We are our number one business asset is yourself. <laughs> no one can yeah. do it like you can. So you have to invest in yourself to be able to handle what you need to do in your business. And so um, I just can't stress that enough. You know, many people like chase the money and chase the dream and then they deal with their health issues. That's not the way to do it. <laughs> the way to do it is to enjoy the process um, and really to invest in that process along the way. So um, especially women, I'm really passionate about um, making that investment in your health. You know, it's hard with families and things of that nature, but it's really important. Great. So um, today we're going to talk about three different practices that um, I utilize. And this is just really scratching the surface, so I will say that. But um, I will be talking about several things. But these are things that I really believe that are very, very important um, in order to get what I call health wealth <laughs> and to get um, you know, freedom within your bodies. So we're gonna talk about each of these very differently and how they kind of encompass and incorporate one another. So the, the first thing I wanna go over is um, mind health, mental health. Um, that's one of the biggest ones that <clears throat> gets kind of shoved under the rug, but honestly speaking, if I did not do stress reduction techniques in my office and if I did not address um, the mental stress spiritual part in my practice, I probably would not get people well as quickly as I do. And so I really like to um, hone in on this part because I think it's just something that gets really heavily overlooked. Um, and one of those principles that I really love to um, talk about and to uh, coach people with is the concept of serving, not pleasing. And this is in several different uh, publications. It's in um, some wonderful business books that I've read and been mentored on. But there is, a there is a difference within every career of serving people and pleasing people. And it's so vitally important for people to get the difference of that and what that difference means for them. Um, because that's really going to change your mental capacity. That's really going to change your stress levels and things of that nature when you're able to, um, in a healthy way, make good rules of how these work. So let's talk a little bit about the difference. Um, pleasers are people that feel that they have to be everything to everybody. Um, that's like the feeling of, you know, you have a client or you have someone and you're literally just doing everything for that person. And it's not because, you know, it's necessarily sometimes it's, it's passion most of the time because we're passionate about what we do and we really believe what we can do can help people. Um, but sometimes when we're pleasers, it's actually harming the people that we're trying to help because we're not really serving them the best way that we can. And so that's the difference in serving is we know that we can't serve everybody. We don't try to serve everybody because we know that, you know, what we do is what we're supposed to do. And it just creates a really good healthy boundary. So you don't get burnout in your mind all the time from trying to please, 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 please everyone. And I'll be honest, like people don't really like to be pleased all the time. When you're really in a place of service, people know that. Um, and people feed off of that and you um, also are able to feed into that because you're not constantly being burnt out, which is a good feeling. Um, so I really like to mention the difference of that, which is just something really important for women in general too. Um, this is something as, there's some good books on this. So if you want more information, I'll definitely give you that. But there's just things that we're, we're taught as women and children to please people. That's what we're taught as children. And if we don't really get separate that as an adult, we kind of get in the wrong, uh, wrong path as far as burnout goes. So 
great. That is such a good distinction. That's, that's really, really important to get because that just goes over into all of our life too. You know, if we are people pleasers in our personal life, we tend to take that into the, into our work as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just don't know we're doing it. Right. You know, we just don't know that we're like going the millionth extra mile for every single person. And not that that's a bad thing. We should, but really you have to get in that lane of where, where it's serving that person and not constantly going over all the time where you feel depleted because then you don't love what you're doing anymore, mm-hmm. you know? Right, right. So it's really important. Um, so continuing on about, um, 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 you know, you know man, the part of the, our brain that's emotional, it's called the limbic system. 99% of our thoughts are subconscious, meaning we don't, we aren't consciously aware of what we're feeling all the time, which is important because our brain has like a million things to do. So there's no way we could be conscious of what we're thinking all of the time. And it's been extensively studied. There's like so much studies on the emotional parts of the brain and how they cause physical symptoms um, and how that creates a stress response in our body. But the The issue here is that when stress gets to a place of where it's chronic, and remember, a lot of it's subconscious, so we might not be cognizant that's what we're doing. But when it creates this chronic persistent stress syndrome, it actually starts to make changes in our brain. And so that part of our brain that's constantly firing because of that chronic stress response starts getting stimulated all the time. And it's like if you worked out one part of your body all the time, that's what's going to be stronger and that's what's going to be dominant versus, you know, the other parts of our brain that we really also need to be in balance, which is those designed to handle threats, Um, you know, more complex thought processes, which we really need those in our businesses and in our life to maintain, um, kind of takes a backseat. And so that's also why it's so important for stress um, to be managed in a healthy way and stress to be um, administered in a healthy way to help not only decrease physical pain, but also help your brain do what it needs to do. Um, So it's very, very important to not let this go by the wayside and just say, oh, I'm stressed. Um, I know it's difficult sometimes when people tell you you're stressed and just to go relax. (laughs) Um, That's, you know, what does relaxation look like? Everybody's different, myself included. So I just, you know, there's, there's so many different things you can do for stress relief. It's about what you, um, you know, for yourself helps you relieve that. For me, I do different things within my practice, stress reduction techniques that help take off those subconscious um, thoughts that we don't always know about, um, which can be so helpful just just recognizing what they are. But, you know, everybody has their own way of dealing with emotions, but you have to have a healthy stress reaction, have a healthy stress um, routine to be able to allow your body to heal. All right, moving on, we're going to go to topic number two, which is taking care of your temple. Temple, what I mean is just taking care of your body. So in this sense, we're going to be talking a little bit about three different things. We're going to be talking about food. Again, this is just scratching the surface, but we're going to be talking about food. We're going to be talking about exercise, and we're going to be talking about sleep and how those all affect your brain and your function of your brain. And I know um, the sleep one's kind of funny, but in reality, a lot of people (laughs) fall asleep um, during like that midday slump, and that's not something that's normal. So uh, we'll be going into that and how what's proper and what you should do to help you know effectively enhance your brain. So let's first talk about food. When we talk about food, you know, food is such an amazing healer. but what we put in our body can really either help us or it can harm us. And that's just um, the reality of the quality of our food in America. Um, You know, our soils, nutrient deficient. There's so many chemicals that are sprayed on everything. Everything can be modified. So a lot of those things really, if you really look into it, they aren't really food. So 
our body doesn't know what to do with them. So that's what I mean as far as what you put in, especially if you're trying to do good, you're trying to eat good things, you need to make sure it's a really good source or else it could be harming you instead of helping you and what it needs to do. Um, your brain in general is a huge consumer of energy. It consumes about 20% of every time we eat, mm. uh, which is more than any other organ. So, you know, think about what you're eating. If you're eating like packaged and sugary things, um, and I know people like their Starbucks, but if you're eating like, you know, if you're drinking a mocha, whatever it is with a ton of sugar, your brain's going to consume 20% of that. So, and you know, our brain needs good nutrients to be able to do everything that it needs to do. So what you actually consume is very important for the energy that it needs to be able to do what it needs to do. Um, so it not only needs energy, but it's also made of a huge amount of fat. So good fats are really vital to our nutrition. You know, it used to be that they would say fat is really bad. Uh, we know in research that fat's actually a very good thing for you in moderation with other different nutrients. Um, and I'm talking about good fats, not like fried chicken and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> um, good things like avocados and coconut oil and nuts and grass-fed uh, meats for people who eat you know, uh, meat in that way. Those are good sources of fats. And the reason we need that fat is because of that brain utilizing 60% of that fat. So uh, nutrition is super, super vital in order to enhance your brain. I definitely insist people to eat more good fats into their diet. Um, walnuts are also really great brain food. Blueberries are really great brain food. Those all help enhance the brain function. So eating clean is very important. Let's talk about exercise. So we know exercise is good for us, but how does it directly affect your brain function? Well, exercise stimulates something called NRF2 um, in the brain. Um, it's called neurotropic releasing factor. And what that does is it does many different things within the body, but it's not only a mood uplifter, so it's gonna help you know, with those um, receptors in the brain to uplift the mood, but that NRF2 has been shown in so many different studies to help with memory, uh, to help with brain um, ability. So it can decrease um, the risk for Alzheimer's. It definitely increases brain health. So it's really, really good to get that blood moving. And however you move is fine. You just need to get moving in order to get that NRF2 in the brain working properly. So we know it's wonderful for the brain. It's also great, you know, to help lose weight, to move your lymphatic system, which we have to move our lymphatic system through movement. It doesn't move um, any other way. So we have to move the lymphatic system. Mm. And then exercise also de decreases stress. So another way to help some people relieve stress is to actually just get their body moving. Did something happen with the slides? Are they working now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, let's see here. And then the last part we're going to talk about in taking care of your temple is sleep. Sleep is huge. Sleep is where we heal. Um, we need deep sleep. So I know I, I can tell you how many patients I see that just aren't sleeping. Um, and you know, they say that they'll be sleeping, but in reality, you know, they're waking up multiple times. Like, are you waking up and feeling rested? A lot of people aren't. And so that deep sleep is very, very vital to be able for us to allow us to heal. Um, and you know, our brain is always detoxifying all the time. Our organs are always detoxifying all the time. Most people don't know that their brain detoxes, but it does it detoxes a couple pounds of toxins every single year. Wow. And the main way it does that is in our sleep. So if we're not sleeping, all those toxins are kind of circulating, not only in our bloodstream, but also in our brain. We have a lymphatic system in our brain as well. So we have to have proper sleep in order to get those things out of our brain or else you'll have brain fog, things of that nature. So brain or sleep, excuse me, is just very, very important. 
um, tips that I have for that is make your room a place of sleep. <laughs> so a lot of people have electronics in their room, TVs in their room. Um, I get it. You know, we're, we love working and doing things. I'm an entrepreneur too, but you have to make your bedroom a place of sleep. Um, you need a dark room. You need it to be a place where your brain can like activate that melatonin and get that working for you. Um, so you need to don't have electronics in your room. Um, EMFs in the electronics can can help hinder or can hinder your sleep too. So just try to make it a sanctuary. You know, close your blinds, make it very dark. Allow that brain. It needs that darkness to release that melatonin. So. Um, as best as you can, make it a place of sleep. Try not to watch TV and stuff like that in your bedroom because that confuses your brain. Mm. It's supposed mm. to be sleeping. <laughs> so if you stimulate it with the TV or your phone um, before bed, it doesn't know that you know it's time for bed because it's just been stimulated. So um, that's why it's just super important to make your room, to make your home and that bedroom a place of sleep so that you can effectively get sleep. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, there's so many stuff there we can go into, but I'm going to keep it there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last thing I, I want to talk about is uh, self-care. So you know, all of those things are, are things you can definitely do do on your own and ways hopefully I gave you some tips there of ways you can start doing things um, on your own to help improve your brain but um, the truth of the matter is is your brain works 24 7 your nervous system works 24 7 and it needs time to recuperate just like you need good sleep for it to recuperate it also needs um, time and maintenance you know just like we get our teeth cleaned uh, we get the oil in our car chain. Um, our nervous system and our brain also really need self-care. And so it's really important to be able to utilize self-care in that way um, so that it can do all of the things that we really need it to do. So that's where I recommend the care that I do, which is very helpful to get stress off of the brain, stress off of the nervous system. Um, we help rewire some of those nerves and help you know, with the stress response and help with the pain and the tightness in the body that's been holding there. Um, and it's just, it's really, really important to take care of your nervous system. Um, many people will get massages and things of that nature, which are wonderful. I get massages myself, but um, you need to actually take care of that nervous system because that nervous system is controlling those muscles that you're trying to relax. So, you have to get that flow moving and then go get the massage and then do things of that nature. Um, but I just can't stress enough how important it is to really take care of that brain and of that nervous system. And, and when, when that happens, you know, you're going to have certain signs. So these are signs that your brain and your body does need help. Um, you know, certain pain signals in your body. Pain is a signal from your brain that something is not right. <laughs> so when you get a pain signal or a limitation in motion, those are all nerve signals. And they're there as instructions for us to recognize that something is not right. So your brain just doesn't send pain signals. It doesn't send signals for limitations in your body when it's healthy and things are flowing normally. It only does that when it needs more stimulation. It needs things to be rewired differently. So um, don't ignore symptoms. Sometimes they build up and build up and build up. And that's like fixing the roof when it's raining. Um, the first signs are signs that your body is not integrating properly and it needs some help. So pain, range of motion limitations are very common. Um, anxiety, you feel like you just can't calm down. That means your brain needs some, some work on it. Um, digestion problems, hormone issues. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but there's a huge access called the gut-brain access where your gut health um, determines your brain health and your brain health determines your gut health. They talk to one another 24-7. So a lot of those can be um, signals that your body just needs care. Um, poor sleep, maybe you're just feeling in a slump, you know, like that mid-afternoon slump we talked about. 
Um, sometimes those are hormone imbalances. It's not just go grab more coffee. Um, <laughs> something needs help. So let's figure out what it is instead of just reaching for those energy drinks and coffee all the time. Um, and then things that I see pretty often are when the, the body is in a state of stress and needs some uh, care is, you know, people that clench, clench their teeth, clench their jaw. I see that very often. Um, and things are just really tight in your body. So those are all kind of warning signs uh, that your body needs, needs care. But I just encourage you to make it more of a routine. And then your body won't be... Um, won't have to go into those as significantly and will be able to heal way quicker when you make it more of a routine and take that self-care that you need. Um, and in reality, the, the amount of stuff that we do, uh, we require a lot of brain power. Um, you know, I know some of you have families or you have other jobs and you have probably multiple things that you're doing at the same time. I do the same. And because our brain has to do all of that all of the time and it has some limitations in that it can only do what's humanly possible for it to do if it's not if it's not getting signals properly if it's not doing things properly then we can't require we can't ask it to do more because it can't <laughs> so um you know that's why people will say oh i used to do this and i just can't or you know i had pain here and it's just getting worse those are warning signs. So your brain is telling you, hey, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> I need some help. Don't ignore me. Um, and um, then once, once that's in more of a state of balance, then it can do what you need it to do. Things will be more easier. Um, you know, sleep will get better. You'll feel more refreshed when it's in that environment that I can, can deal with. So hmm. that's mainly where I come in is the self-care part. But there's many different ways you can get self-care. Um, I'm just a brain advocate, so I like to take care of the brain as much as I can because we utilize it so much. So those are my kind of tips for that is um, mental health, um, you know, nutritional chemical imbalances, and then self-care. When you have um, a healthy balance of all of those, your brain is going to be more optimized and able to handle things more, more easily, um, more efficiently. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll feel a lot of people just don't really know how much better they can feel. You get really used to the way that you feel. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was there for a long time. You get very used to, um, to symptoms. You get very used to waking up and not feeling rested. You know, those are just mm -hmm. examples. And the truth of the matter is there's so much more freedom that can be had uh, when you take steps and start taking care and making yourself your number one employee. Um, when you start doing that, then things start to shift. And you'll notice things shift in your business too because when you feel better, your business does better. Wow. Th this was, I mean, this was fabulous. This is a ton of information um, packed in a, in a very compressed area, but really, really fascinating. So um, there are some questions for you. There's questions I have, as well as other questions that have been coming in. And I, one thing is, could you share a little bit about your own experience when you were ill and, and mm -hmm. what was, what were you trying? What were doctors trying with you? And how did you finally come to a different a different way of dealing with this. Yeah, absolutely. That's, um, I'm going to do a condensed version because that's a whole nother story. But um, when I was about 19 years old, I went from like a really healthy young adult to completely bedridden um, and come to find out that I had something called Lyme disease, which is a very devastating infection, infectious disease that comes with so many different symptoms. So we didn't know what I had for many years. Um, and then once we had finally figured it out after like so many different doctors, that wasn't the end, unfortunately. It was just the beginning. So once we figured out what I had, then I went through the Western medical route. I didn't know, you know, we didn't know any different and there's definitely a place for that, absolutely. Um, 
but I just got sicker and sicker and sicker. Nothing was helping. And so, you know, I started turning to alternative providers. Um, I grew up in the Northwest. So I grew up in the Idaho, Washington border and um, a naturopath and, and chiropractic physician um, were just able to think outside of the box for me and start searching for options. So once I started seeing them, I started feeling better. Um, and then I got to about 40, maybe 40%, 45% better. And I had kind of tapped out what they had for me. Um, so at that point I knew I had to go back to school. I had to figure out, <laughs> you know, what kind of was going on. Cause there, I just kind of tapped everything out. So, um, I went back to school, mind you, I was still very ill, but, um, I went back and I went back to grad school and, um, Long story short, I started just being surrounded by very brilliant people. One of my mentors is a certified craniopath. He taught me a ton about the brain and just differentiating system or symptoms in the body, which can be caused from different sources. Um, and it was probably about like a nine year journey of just doing so many different things, rebuilding my body after the af aftermath of so many antibiotics. And um, it was a process. and. I'll be honest, there's still some things now and then I struggle with, mm -hmm. but um, the, the changes, I feel healthier now than I ever was as a, as a teen. So it's, it's not an, as easy as, you know, this was the miracle that worked for me. And I believe that for every person that there's just, we're just so uniquely different. And that's why I do so many different things is because it was really a combination of things that really got me better. Um, but I truly believe that, um, God has, God allowed me to go through that to, um, have that for my patients and, um, think outside the box for them. Wow. That's good. Yeah. There's nothing like a personal experience to make it, to take head theory down into, into your heart, you know, and, and make it real and useful to other folks. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really vital. You know, Dr. Hamill, you mentioned earlier, and I kind of want to come back to it. Um, I think we all know that we need to take care of ourselves, but why is this important for my business? Why is it important that I take care of myself physically and emotionally? Um, how does that impact my business? Yeah, I kind of, I, I talked about that briefly, but um most individuals don't really see themselves as their biggest asset yeah. <laughs> uh, in their business. And it's very true. You know, I've had days where I've come to work and I maybe didn't feel awesome and patients sense it. You sense it. There's just a different, it's just different. The energy is different. <laughs> mm -hmm. And versus when you feel really good, when you feel, um, like you can do the things you want to do. You have the energy to do the things you want to do. Um, your business is going to reflect that. Um, clients you're around are going to sense that. Um, you can do more in your day, which is going to mean better um, things for your business because you can handle it. Mm -hmm. um, when your body is overwhelmed and you're not addressing taking care of things, most people experience burnout or they... Um, you know, don't beat themselves up for not being able to do all that they want to do or do all that they want to do, but at the end of all of that fall apart. So it's really about creating that very healthy balance of, um, you know, doing things that need to be done for your business, but not neglecting yourself in the means of it. Mm -hmm. Because you want a business that's successful, but you also want a business that's going to last and that you're going to last. Right. So um, it's very vital to take care of yourself to not only have the energy to be able to handle it and the mental capacity, but to really be successful in it. So it's just, it's just important. Great. Here's a, a question that somebody sent in. Um, you had mentioned that the brain detoxifies two pounds of mm -hmm. toxins a year. What, what does that mean exactly? And how does it do that? So 
Let me start with this first because it'll make a little bit more sense. We have something in our body called the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. The lymphatic system is basically like our immune system. It's like the plumbing system of our body. So it's got a lot of different circuits in it, just like our circulatory system with our blood vessels. This is a whole other network of vessels that are just for the lymphatic fluid. Um, that's from our neck down, from our head and neck down. But our brain has a completely separate uh, lymphatic system. It's called the glymphatic system. And so it has its own kind of network of vessels and things that also circulate that lymphatic fluid. And what the lymphatic fluid does is it basically is like the plumbing system of our body. It takes out dead cells. It takes out bacteria and stuff of that nature. Um, it just cleans out the mess that needs to be cleaned out um, every day for us. And when that system gets backed up, because either we're exposed to, to a lot of toxins, either in our environment or in our food or hormones, um, and we're just not moving or that system isn't moving, then people start getting symptoms, they, their, their immune systems decrease. Um, you can get swelling in your body. Like so many different things can happen when the lymphatic system is not flowing. So the brain in itself, because it has its own lymphatic system, it also detoxifies. Things can get into our brain just like the rest of our body. Infections can get into the brain. Um, chemicals and metals can get into our brain. And if that lymphatic system in the brain is not flowing, then we're not going to be detoxifying from our brain the way we need to. So that's why I mentioned that because in our sleep, that's where that system is activated the most, that glymphatic system. So it's still working during the day, but it's really, really activated during our sleep. So if we're not getting proper sleep, then um, we're not actually properly detoxifying our body. Nice. That, that's really fascinating. That's really fascinating. Um, it, here's another question somebody sent in. I, I think that, you know, for the most part, we've heard for quite a while now about um, it, it, not using electronics before we go to bed and, you know, what that's doing to your brain when you're, you know, all of that back and forth is happening. And, um, we've made an effort in our in our bedroom we had so many my husband's an engineer and so we between the two of us there's a billion electronics in our bedroom and in yeah. our living room and in our office and everywhere but you know really trying to go through and making sure that they're turned off they're not beeping there's no blue lights showing there's you know whatever is going on but somebody asked what about reading before bed like if you read to yeah. make you drowsy Reading is a great option. Um, something I definitely recommend is reading, taking a bath before uh, bed, something to get your, your mind in that state of relaxation. The thing that reading is on, reading, I would say, from a book, not a screen. Mm. So I know with all the text stuff, we love our screens. <laughs> <laughs> I love my screens too, but in, um, in reality, when you are faced with a screen, um, there's something called blue light, which you can get blue light blockers, which help, but also screen time interferes with different receptors within your vision, um, which can, you know, are controlled through your brain. And they actually start to create a set of stimulation. So, you know, screens and things of that nature with the flashing of of the lights and the difference of um, objects, those all are stimulating for our brain. Um, and so it's harder for our brain to really get the sense of, hey, you know, it's getting closer to bedtime. We need to start creating something called melatonin in our brain, which is gonna help us relax and really sleep. Um, it's harder for your brain to do that when you expose it to the screens. Um, so Reading is an excellent option to do. That's what I do. Uh, I have a book by my bed that I read every night and I go to bed right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, or like something like a shower or something like that to just calm your body down. Um, 
whatever it is, you know, stretch before bed, something that's just gentle and can calm you down uh, versus anything that's going to create that rapid eye movement with those screen times can actually hinder that melatonin from being produced. So it's not something that I would recommend. Hmm. So you had mentioned in, in one of the um, slides about signals that, that you're getting from your brain uh, and from your body that, that things are just not quite right. And mm -hmm. so let's say that, that somebody is getting some of those symptoms or all of those symptoms, you know, like as some of us do, mm -hmm. what, what should they do first? I mean, what, what would be the next steps for them to take? Well, the first steps are our body's always, so what I meant from the signaling is our body is always craving some sort of signal. So mm -hmm. when the, with the nervous system, it's, um, it's craving like some end game in order for that signal to function better. Um, and the thing about the brain and the nervous system is they do functions, but it doesn't mean that that function is the most effective thing they can do. Um, they just do things because that's what they need to do with the least amount of energy. So the brain is pretty <laughs> picky in that way where, you know, we can do things and we think that, um, we think that pain and limitation is something that is okay. Um, and really that's just the, the body's way of compensating for it. It's not the most effective way to deal with something but it's the only way your body can deal with it. So if that's the only way that it can, then that's the signal that you need to be able to know that something's wrong. So what you should do first is, um, you know, most, of, most people, I would say, are not in tune with their bodies. So you need to first come to a place where you really start getting more in tune with how you're feeling. Um, whether that's you start to feel those symptoms and you know it's after a meeting or it's in a state of when you're more stressed then you know that those symptoms are more stress related um and you know that that's something that you need to get a better handle on whether it's through care based or something else mm -hmm. um i think the part of just recognition is really important um recognizing that you're really not sleeping or you're really not eating properly, you're just getting something in, recognition is, is very important. And recognition is something that is, you know, this is a lifestyle. This isn't something where you take magic pills and things clear up automatically. Being healthy is a lifestyle. And right. so it's something that takes work every single day, but it's something that is worth it because you're investing in yourself, which is going to invest in, you know, your company and your business. So, um, doing things like eating better, drinking more water, uh, which is, I didn't even talk about, but super important sleeping, like all of those things need to be something that's part of your regulatory lifestyle. Um, and if it's not, then you can't expect to feel healthy or be healthy when you're not making it a priority. So, it's not saying you have to overhaul your whole life, but you just have to start recognizing things and realizing those habits and realizing those patterns. And if you need more help with that, then that's where I come in or other practitioners can come in and help you with that because things go easier when your body's working better. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot there as far as um, women as business owners, as, you know, mothers and wives mm -hmm. <laughs> and so forth. We just seem to think we have this endless supply mm -hmm. and we may not be as in tune to what, what's causing our stress. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> we're really good at compensating <laughs> and we're really good at prioritizing things. Um, but you know, what's sad is that what can happen is, is that the body is really excellent at compensating. It will do whatever it needs to do to get us to what it needs to do. But when there's something that's improperly happening for a period of time, your body can only do that for so long. And then you hit a spot where, you know, something starts to hurt and then everything starts to hurt. And then this happens and your digestion gets bad. 
And it's like, well, it's not that one incident that made everything go bad. Right. You didn't go down and pick up a pen and your back went out. That's not what caused your back to go out. Um, it's repetitive things over the course of things that you just really have not made yourself a priority. Or maybe you don't know, you've tried things and there's things that just aren't working that need to be differently addressed because you are a different person. Um, and when you do that, then your body's just so much more resilient and it can handle things better. And, you know, it's not a domino effect versus if you do get hurt or injured, you bounce back really quickly. Yeah. And that's when you have a healthy nervous system, you're able to do that. Right, right. Well, Dr. Hamill, how can our listeners get a hold of you? Um, what, how can they contact you? Uh, you can uh, email me directly. My email is just drdr.rachelhamill at gmail.com. I've got a lot of information on my website. Again, it's just drrachelhamill.com. I have online scheduling on there for my office. Um, or they can call the number that's on my website as well and get in contact with me that way. Great. That sounds wonderful. And I, I have a feeling that as people listen to this, they're going to be wanting to reach out to you because we've all got those little nagging things that are telling us that things are possibly not quite right. Yes. And how long we live with that before we decide to do something about it is, you know, a, a whole other thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Completely up to us, right? It is. You have to take care of your health. <laughs> well, I so appreciate um, you being with us today and sharing all of this wisdom and information. Uh, it, this has just been great. I'm so grateful for uh, being with us and being our thought leader for today. And to all of our attendees that were with us online, I want to thank you for joining us. And we will be back again soon with the next Women Lead webinar series on how you can lead, achieve, and succeed as a female leader in business. Be sure to check out Dr. Hamill's website, drrachelhamill.com, where she's got lots of really great information there. And just keep learning and keep this journey with her. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you again, Dr. Hamill, and uh, better health to everybody, right? <laughs> yes, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. You bet. Take care now.